The following is presented by the Pinellas County Extension. Welcome to your Florida Vegetable Garden. I'm Jane Morse and I'm going to talk about integrated pest management. Pests in the vegetable garden include weeds, insects, mites, diseases, nematodes, and even animals such as raccoons, rabbits, and birds that might reduce yields. A gardener has many options for reducing pest problems. Pesticides can be harmful to people, pets, beneficial insects, and the natural environment and should be used only after all other pest management steps have been taken. Integrated pest management uses a variety of methods to suppress and reduce pest problems. These include cultural, mechanical, biological, and chemical pest controls. Cultural controls include choosing varieties that are resistant to the nematodes and diseases in your area, and learning about the cultural needs of the plant. Needs would include proper planting times, fertilizer, and watering needs. It is also important to water in the early morning to reduce the incidence of disease. Proper spacing to allow room for growth and proper air movement is another cultural pest control. Mechanical methods of pest control might include hoeing and mulching to reduce weeds, hand picking or removing insects or even squishing them or placing them in a bucket of soapy water to drown them can suppress pests to a level that is acceptable. Placing protective cups around plants to prevent cutworms or even fencing to keep out rabbits are also mechanical control methods. There are reflective mulches to reduce insects too and you can provide covers to keep plants from freezing or to keep their leaves dry or to keep the bugs out. You can also remove diseased leaves or plants to slow the spread of diseases. Biological pest control is using Mother Nature's hit squad, all those naturally occurring parasites, predators, and pathogens to control pest bugs. The beneficial insects you most likely know are the lady beetle larva and the lacewing larva. There are also big-eyed bugs, minute pirate bugs, predatory stink bugs, and tiny parasitic wasps that help to control pests without the use of pesticides. We can help them to help us by planting flowers around the garden. Flowers provide nectar and pollen that attract beneficial insects. Chemical pest control is the use of pesticides. These should only be used when absolutely necessary and after all other control measures have been tried because they kill the beneficial bugs too and can cause harm to humans, pets, wildlife, and the environment. And plants can tolerate a 10 to 20% loss of their leaves with no ill effect. Before starting any kind of pest control program, always positively identify the insect. If a pesticide is necessary, use the least toxic ones first, such as an insecticidal soap, horticultural oil, or BT. They are very good at killing insects, but they don't persist in the environment like other more toxic chemicals. Always read and follow the label exactly because it is federal law. Any deviation from what the label states is breaking federal law and potentially causing harm to people, pets, wildlife, and the environment. With our sandy soils, it is easy for chemicals to leach down into our water and cause pollution if applied improperly. The vegetable garden should be monitored or scouted at least twice a week. Look for signs of insects such as frass from caterpillars, holes in the leaves, or the insects themselves. Remember to choose disease and nematode resistant plants. Take care of them properly, water in the early morning, hoe or use mulch to reduce weeds, pick off insects, use barriers to keep pests out, promote those beneficial insects by planting flowers around the garden, and use pesticides only as a last resort. Always identify pests before starting chemical control and follow the label exactly. For more detailed information, contact your local University of Florida IFAS Extension. Thank you for joining me today.
I'm Jane Morse, and this is your Florida Vegetable Garden. For more information on this and many more topics, visit www.pinellascountyextension.org.